Thank you to Boxu for sponsoring this episode. Boxu is a monthly subscription service that delivers premium Japanese snacks and tea pairings straight from Japan to your door. They even partner with 100 plus year old family businesses to make signature treats you can't find anywhere else. Here are some of the snacks that I got this month. If you want to taste these snacks for yourself, head to the link in the bio and use code ALVIN to get $15 off your order. Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Anime with Alvin, where this week I'm taking a look at the souffle pancakes from Food Wars, a dish that is a bit more complex than it looks. The key to this dish seems to lie within the red bean paste, which turns a stack of souffle pancakes into something more reminiscent of doriyaki. To get started, I rinse the azuki beans and then I'm putting them into a pressure cooker. They go in here with a couple cups of water and I'm cooking them for around 30 minutes or so. Pretty scared of pressure cookers, so I'm just gonna let you do your thing while I watch from far away. Once the 30 minutes are up, I'm straining the beans once more and placing them in a food processor to- Oh! Uh, you just- Okay! Is this Black Mirror? I'm looking for an ultra smooth consistency, so I'm passing the paste through a sieve just to make sure I catch any bits left behind. After we have our paste, we're transferring this into a pan to cook with a cup of brown sugar and a little bit of salt. The color is gonna go from a pale purple to an extremely deep and dark violet. This is what we're looking for, because it signifies the paste has thickened, the water's gone, and it's reduced to a nice consistency that'll thicken after cooling. Moving on to the pancake molds, I'm just- Hey! Who put my stuff like this, huh? These are tall stainless steel pastry rings that will serve as the mold for our pancakes. To ensure an easy release, they've been sprayed with a nonstick spray, and I'm cutting up some parchment to fold in order to fit along the inside of each mold. Once the molds are prepped, it's time to move on to the next part. In the show, it's shown that the character is making Greek yogurt using a makeshift assembly rig, constructed by a bowl, two chopsticks, a colander, and coffee filters. I'm portioning out a hefty amount of just whole milk normal yogurt into these two coffee filters on the colander. Even after a couple of seconds, you can see that the whey is already dripping. Man, I wish I had drip like that. This does take some time, so I'm going to leave this to go for about an hour or two. The longer you go, the thicker it gets. This batch of yogurt is good to go. On to the garnish for the pancakes, a black sesame twill. Here I have some toasted black sesame seeds, which I'm going to grind up in a mortar and pestle roughly, but not down to a fine powder. This stuff smells great, kind of like tang yun. Moving on to the cookie batter itself. Into a small bowl, I'm combining flour, water, sugar, honey, and melted unsalted butter along with a couple teaspoons of those black sesame seeds. Give this batter a little taste. I don't know why I did that. This is raw. Once the batter is smooth, I'm now making the stencils for the twill. This will help give its circular, perfectly round shape. So I'm gonna use a inverted teacup on a strip of acetate, trying to cut out as perfect of a circle as I can. And after washing off the Expo marker thoroughly, I'm adhering it to a tray lined with silpat with gaff tape, cause I, I'm a video guy. Taking a dollop of the twill batter, I'm spreading a very thin layer across to try to fill the circle, but not have it too thick. If it's too thick, the twills won't bubble and create that lacy texture we're looking for. After repeating this about 7 or 8 times, these go in a preheated oven at 350 for about 10 minutes. These are done when the entirety of the cookie is a deep dark golden brown. And these smell great, but it's not the texture I was looking for, so I'm adding some sugar and butter on the fly just to loosen up the batter a little bit. I think I threw away the stencil with the gaff tape, so I'm just gonna freehand these instead. And with the help of that extra sugar and butter, this round of cookies came out with that lacy texture I was looking for. Finally, on to the souffle pancake batter itself. This is a two-part batter, and the first part consists of combining two egg yolks with a half an ounce of granulated sugar, some cake flour, baking powder, kosher salt, and whole milk. This is a thick paste-like batter that is going to be aerated by the second portion of this batter which starts by whipping four large egg whites in a stand mixture with the whisk attachment and slowly streaming in 2.5 ounces of sugar. We're gonna whip this as it slowly, slowly comes together into soft, fluffy peaks. When that's ready to go, I'm first folding in a third of the egg whites into the base of the egg yolk batter. I'm essentially offering up these egg whites to the egg yolks as a sacrifice. After the first sacrifice, I'm now folding in two ounces of the Greek yogurt we made. According to the show, this is supposed to provide a tanginess that goes well with the rest of the flavors in this pancake. 
Here I am, folding the rest of the egg whites into the batter, praying that I'm not overfolding, but also not underfolding, because, well, that would be bad. The batter is now ready to be cooked. Into a nonstick pan goes the mold that we had prepared earlier. I'm ladling in the pancake batter about 75 to 80% of the way up, covering with a lid and letting this cook for about 10 minutes or so. What we're doing here is simultaneously crisping up the bottom of the pancake and steaming the fluffy inside batter until it reaches the top. And honestly, that's when I know it's about ready to be turned. I know you're not supposed to use steel in a nonstick pan, but if, if I didn't, there's no way to get this out. And not gonna lie, this part is probably the hardest part of the whole recipe. And instead of flipping the pancake onto the pan, I'm flipping the pan onto the pancake. And a one, two, three, woo! A right, little bit of spillage, that's okay. If you're not spilling when you're cooking, it's just cooking. I'm gonna cover this up again and let it go for another 10 minutes until it's really started to get big and bouncy. After releasing the sides with an offset spatula and unwrapping its little parchment paper towel, we have our fully disrobed first souffle pancake. Now that's the kind of jiggle I want to see. I'm repeating the process with a second pancake. Batter in, 10 minutes, pan on the pancake, flip, admire the smooth butt, 10 minutes, out, time to plate. Before we stack the second pancake, we have to place the red bean filling on the first one, smoothing it out into a nice pattern and creating a sticky base for the second pancake to go onto. And after another disrobe of the parchment, it's time to stack. Here I am, carefully placing the souffle pancake on top, trying not to jiggle and deflate this too much. Alright, it is now time for the garnishes. First goes down powdered sugar, then a tablespoon of butter, and a nice drizzle of golden syrup used in the episode, not maple syrup. Kendall kindly prepared me some Chantilly cream, which is going to be used in order to hold up the black sesame twills. This is quite the balancing act. The heat of the pancakes is melting the cream, making it really difficult to hold things upright. Additionally, I'm adding some loose pineapple leaves and some rosemary flowers that we actually picked out of the back garden. After playing a little game of, is this gonna stand up? I present to you our version of the souffle pancakes from Food Wars inspired heavily by Dorayaki. Here I am trying to get a spoonful of everything, cutting all the way down and getting some of that red bean paste in the process. It is quite sweet, but it is very, very, very comforting. And that touch of red bean paste is a really nice addition. Ooh, these black sesame twills are really good. All right, well, this is gonna get messy really soon. So I'm gonna let the team come and dig in a little bit because they've been working hard and I should feed them. Thanks again for our friends over at Boxu for supporting this episode. I think it's pretty cool that I can get authentic Japanese snacks that are usually hard to find delivered straight to me. This month's theme is Boxu Tanjobi. And guess what that means? It's Boxu's birthday. They're turning six and they're celebrating with a collection of their staff and their subscribers' favorite snacks. And every box is also a booklet that tells you more about each month's theme and where the snacks come from. But my favorites this month have to be these mochi truffles that had like a little strawberry and ganache filling inside. Super good. To try Boxu for yourself, head to the link in the bio and use code Alvin to get $15 off your order.